everybody, my name is Dave Jackson and this is Tales from the Backlog, a video games podcast where I bring in guests to talk about the games we play. My guests today are friends of the show and cello fetishizers, Heather Siddiqui and Nick Greenberg. Hey guys. Hi. Good to have you guys on the show. No, thanks for having us. Like I I'm honored to be as a, one of your one of your many podcasts. I'm just surprised you haven't asked me to talk about video games earlier. Yeah, it's a it's a fatal flaw of the show that we waited this long. I won't hold it against you. Yeah. Today the game we're going to be talking about is Florence. And Florence is an interactive story kind of visual novel type game developed by Mountains and published by Annapurna Interactive in 2018. Elevator Pitch for Florence is a visual novel about a relationship with kind of mobile game touchscreen puzzle mechanics. Sound right to you guys? Yeah. Accurate. Yeah. But before we get into our focus on Florence, what else have you guys been playing recently other than taking a long, long time to replay Florence? <laughs> um, I live and breathe for Animal Crossing, uh, mainly because it's adorable and I can do it without putting much thought into it. Mm-hmm. So I can do it, uh, play it during a meeting. Not that I would ever do that. No, of course and... not. <laughs> And, you know, I can, I can like play it throughout my day or, you know, in passing, or if I have like five minutes here or there. Um, yeah, I haven't played the new update yet, but I am very excited to do so. She'll play it if she's invited to the Animal Crossing episode on your podcast, though. <laughs> yeah. Something tells me there's not going to be an Animal Crossing episode, but if there is, wow. she'll be the first, uh, the first call I make. There you go. Uh, I have been sticking, I, I'm currently uh, studying for an MBA over in Cambridge in England. So my video gaming activity has dropped down dramatically. But uh, when I do have time in the morning, I'm not doing anything. I, I'm sticking to one of my bread and butters, and that's Hearthstone by Blizzard. Uh-huh. Uh, it's just such an it's just such an easy game to just throw on and, and play a quick game for like, you know, 10 minutes, give or take, and here and there. So that's that's what I've been playing recently, along with a little bit of Animal Crossing, especially now that the like Heather mentioned, the update's coming soon or it's out now. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um. You've Nick, you've always been about like as long as I've known you and we've talked about games, you've always been about those uh, card games like Slay the Spire and Hearthstone. I didn't know you were a Hearthstone guy, but oh, I now, <laughs> now I do. He's insanely obsessed with it. That's not accurate, but. Uh, it's 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 easily my most played game for the past couple of years like yeah the, the fact that it's just it's just easy as like a mobile game you know and we're going to talk about that with florence as well but it's just such an easy game to throw on uh when you just have like a, a couple minutes here and there and especially because they've 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 done a lot of stuff especially for like the solo adventures things as well so yeah big fan of hearthstone big fan of the card game slay the spire and stuff like that just something like those like strategic elements in in just in those kind of uh those kind of games uh, i'm a big fan of right now yeah well i mean like I, I don't think i've ever talked to somebody who was like yeah i play hearthstone sometimes it's fine i don't you know i don't play it a lot yeah that's i've right. never talked to someone who's like only dabbled in hearthstone it doesn't seem like that kind of game like you either hate it or you play it forever yeah, I, I you know at one point I I kind of it di- it did die down for a little bit, um, probably because we had a heated negotiation about it. No, 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 that's a different <laughs> game. Actually, actually that's, she's talking about World of Warcraft. Oh, uh, that that oh, yeah. that yeah. I literally had to put down because it was. <laughs> I, we're going off script a little bit, but long story short, uh, Heather was giving me some very serious information, like family information, and I wasn't listening to a single word because I was like in the middle of like a, a of like a. Uh, instance in world of warcraft and that's when i realized yep. i need to stop playing right now and i haven't picked yep. it up since. <laughs> so yeah that's one. that's been one of those that that was one of those moments gotcha yeah and heather like i swear every time i turn on my switch and i see that your like your profile is on it's like heather's playing animal crossing she's up to 700 hours of animal crossing that's... I love oh it. no oh my god <laughs> I know we're, I know we're recording live, but we are right in front of our TV. I'm actually going to put it on. I want to see what her no- official number is right now. My only Nintendo friends are you and Nick. Um, so that's, <laughs> this is an embarrassing moment for me. 
it's the only thing that being friends on Nintendo is good for because you can't like chat with each other. You can't really do anything fun. All you can do is look at what other people are playing and like how long they've been playing. And you're not the only like, you know, several hundred hour Animal Crossing player. I feel like everyone who's playing it. I know that's I know, another game. I, I know. I know someone who's gone to nine 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 plus for on Animal Crossing. So she, it's not just her. Close. Yeah, you are close. I was gonna say that's another game. No one's ever like you know, played twenty five hours of Animal Crossing. It's either like they don't play it, or it's like you know, eight hundred hours or more. Yeah, I mean, oh, but uh, you can talk to people on Nintendo through the very um, poorly. Yeah, but it's a thing you can do now. It is, but that's what he's referencing. Like through the phone, it's 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 horrendous to try and like do. Oh, through the inside. phone app, you yeah. can talk to people. We yeah. did it. We did it once. Like a voice chat. We did it once, and needless to say, oh. we have not done it again because, yeah, right. That's just too much. Yeah, everyone I know who like you know plays Smash Brothers online or something would just talk on Discord or something like that because Nintendo doesn't support that, like the way that PlayStation does, at least. Are you just pulling this up to shame me right now? No, I'm not trying to shame you. I'm just trying to fact check. It just says 400 hours or more, so that 700 okay. the, the 700 one does sound accurate though. To be fair, all right, you you caught me in my uh, caught me in a little bit of hyperbole there, but still, classic Dave. My point my point stands. <laughs> I, I I live with her, and I'm saying that your point is stands and is correct. <laughs> yeah, I think the difference between 400 hours and 700 hours in a game is pretty small. I think correct. <laughs> well, and then I have this bad boy. Animal Crossing pillow. Oh, we have <laughs> we have an Isabel uh, pillow there. Yes. Very good. All right. Um, let's see. So I'm playing a game right now that I want to kind of shout out on the show because I don't know if it's ever going to turn into an episode on the show, but it's called Dusk. And it's like, Nick or Heather, did you ever play Doom or Quake, like the old, old ones? Sadly not, but I did watch the one of a, a recent documentary about it, and it makes me want to go try it out. Okay, so for people listening, if you haven't played Dusk, uh, Dusk is like in that old Doom like aesthetic, like the super old. Uh, it looks like a like a PlayStation One game or something like that, and it's like I don't know. It's it's got this like demonic story, all kinds of like shamans and you know results of horrible rituals and stuff like that running around and you just get a bunch of guns and a bunch of swords and scythes and go around and i don't know kill all these monsters and learn about this weird story that they have going on and if you like that kind of old like you know like i said like doom i like that kind of game it's really really good it's on switch now which is where i'm playing it and it's not very expensive i think full price is like 20 bucks so I've been enjoying that, playing on easy mode because I'm not a pro FPS person, and I'm enjoying that a lot. So wanted to give that a shout out in case anyone listening likes like those old Doom games or something like that. Because again, I'm not sure it's going to turn into an episode on the show. I don't have a whole lot to say about it beyond what I just said. Just it's a lot of fun. There's a bunch of blood, shamans, demons, stuff like that. Wait, what more do you need? Oh, I will say I saw it on uh, on some random Instagram account called Tales from the Backlog, and I saw a screenshot of it. And I did note that, like, even if I haven't played Doom, I could tell it was it, it looked instantly like Doom. So it definitely has that visual. Yeah, that random Instagram account that everybody who's listening to this show should go check out if they haven't already. At Tales from the Backlog. See, look at that, Nick. You're already a pro podcaster. Are you? <laughs> All right, so let's uh, let's get into Florence. We're going to take a short little break, listen to some music from Florence, and then when we come back, we will get started. back 
let's talk about Florence. For people listening, Florence is basically just a story. There is not a whole lot else to talk about. We'll, so we'll have a very short kind of no spoiler section where we talk about, you know, how do we feel about the story and stuff like that. And we'll talk about the music and the puzzles, but there's not like a ton. So if you haven't played Florence, feel free to listen up to the spoiler wall and then we'll get into the story after that. So we always begin the show by talking about our personal histories with the games on here and the guests always get to go first. So Heather and Nick, what like what brought you to Florence? What got you interested in it? And I, I mean, I know I recommended you guys play it, but I don't play every game that people recommend to me. So what made you uh, want to get into it? I have this annoying friend named David, and he recommends video games to me, and I always play them. Um, oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, you recommended it to me, and I think, honestly, I was I was sick in bed or having a lazy morning in bed or something, and I played the whole game immediately, um, and then I, I was just so taken aback by it sorry it's kind of weird to think of how to describe this game without talking about the story but um it was honestly fabulous like usually when I'm in bed in staying in the morning like I'm reading a book or you know whatever but this was kind of perfect for that I think it's a great starter game in fact I want my dad to play it um he's never played video games but I think this interface and storytelling mechanisms will like kind of pull him in, give him a different idea of ways to tell a story. Um, yeah. 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 I wanted to, I want to build on the fact that it's a starter game because the additional backstory is that uh, Heather has never really played video games before she started dating me. And I had been wanting to get the Nintendo switch and I hadn't gotten it until actually around basically the start of the pandemic, actually like that's pretty much around the time I got a switch and at that time, she was expressing interest as well. And so I got her uh, the Nintendo Switch Lite as well. And so all of a sudden, you recommend this game. Um, and like, and the way she said as a starter game, it is it is in fact a starter game. Um, because, you know, the, the mechanics are pretty easy. Um, there's like, there were like some reminiscence of like old school games as well that I like kind of took note of. Um, and so it was like a perfect like way to like get someone into video gaming, but at the same time, tell like a pretty interesting story and add in the musical elements and, and things like that so yeah so i i got i got i tried it out when heather tried it out courtesy of you uh so that's my experience of it so we're kind of we're kind of linked in the same way uh really quickly right. i'm being maligned i do have a history with video games i play okay. pokemon on the game boy and mm -hmm. a few different games on the gamecube and that was a rich part of my history that should not be yeah. forgotten forgot right of course <laughs> We will not try to erase your personal history playing Pokemon, which I, I think we all have a history playing Pokemon too. So hell yeah. <laughs> As for me, uh, what kind of brought me to playing Florence is I first heard about this game on a games podcast that I listened to called Kane and Rince. They are really, really excellent at taking a game and having just extremely thoughtful conversations about it and Florence was on there and one of the panelists uh, on the show described playing through the game and hearing the song that uh, Krish plays in the first couple chapters when he's playing in the park um, on the cello and they just they talked so like so much sugar about this song and I was like okay I'm gonna go on YouTube and listen to this song so I did and I loved it and then I was like, okay, I'll check this game out. And then I looked on Switch and it was like four bucks or however much it costs. And actually, I think it was on sale. It was like, you know, $2 or something like that. So I gave it a shot. I bought it, enjoyed it, recommended it, as we've already heard. I actually used this game in a class I was teaching about like using games to facilitate you know, learning English. And like you guys said, it's a good starter game for people who don't play a ton of games. It's also a great game for people who are trying to learn uh, English because there's like no dialogue in the game at all. You don't actually have to 
I think there's only like two chapters that have any dialogue at all. And it's like three sentences. Yep. So it's a good game for that because it's there's nothing to like misunderstand. And then you can use it to kind of springboard discussions. So I used it in a class and then I bought it on my phone just like last week because I wanted to play it on the phone because as we'll get into, I think the mechanics of it work best on a phone. But, you know, this game takes like 45 minutes to play. So playing it three times, which I normally don't play games that many times, it's not a time commitment at all. For so. sure. We, in preparation for this podcast, we, you know, we, we picked it up again quickly just to, to refresh our memory. Um, and I think we started it like an hour before this podcast was, was being recorded and finished with yep. like 30 minutes <laughs> to spare or so. So yeah, it's very, a very quick game to play for sure. Yeah. I think like as I was I was playing it and taking notes at the same time and it still took like 40 minutes. Yeah. So I I th- I think I went through a chapter once and I I finished it and then I was like, "Oh wait, I think I saw something." And I went and just played the chapter again really quickly to try and like take the note or whatever and again, only did did mm-hmm. not take long whatsoever. So yeah. Yeah. So let's talk about kind of how the game works. This is, again, this is the no spoiler part of the show. So we're going to begin by talking about the story and like the setup of the story. In Florence, you play as Florence, who is a 25-year-old woman. Her name's Florence Ya, and it's about her relationship with a man named Krish Hemrajani. I think I'm pronouncing that right. I hope. She meets Krish in the park as he's doing a street performance on a cello, like I said earlier. And that's all I'm going to say about the story for now. Don't want to get any deeper. Quick question. Is this in Seattle? I should have researched this, but it sure seems like it's in Seattle. Okay, I have some strong opinions about your question here. Um... Is this a PC podcast? <laughs> wait, wait, sorry. Is, it, it, what, is this PC or rated R, this podcast? This, this, is, a, uh, this is an NC-17 podcast. Oh, how about it, babe? <laughs> okay, so no spoilers, but a coffee shop is involved at one point, and I'm pretty sure that's the only reason you think it's based in Seattle is because of a coffee no, shop. No, that's not the only reason. I thought it was in Seattle because it's like, okay, so coffee, but sure, but they go to like, you know, a famous fish market and stuff like that. So I so my my first my thought was Hong Kong based on the 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 couple of times when she's you know talking with her mother for example um you know they have the, they have chinese characters uh, involved in there and then my second guess as to why that was was because um queen victoria I, yeah yeah one of the one of the dates one a date spot was queen victoria uh river market or something like that and so my first ah. thought was ah okay so that's just brutish ruled hong kong then got it okay so that's that's my guess that makes sense I just kind of like, I was like, oh, Heather likes this game. It must be in Seattle. And all the other things make sense to me. So, and hey, sometimes it rains there, you know? So that could, that could be Seattle. Yeah, exactly. Ugh, yeah, this is scientific. Here. I can't even handle it. <laughs> I think, I think, I think they show, you know, season changes. So it, it's, it's cold sometimes. So it's clearly somewhere in like the north or something like that, potentially, you know? That's true. They, they do show like a for sure there's winter in there cuz there's like snow outside in one of the things. So well, maybe it's not Hong Kong. As we all know, Seattle is the only place to have winter. So it does make yes. sense. Yes. Correct. What about um Canada? Like Vancouver? Could PC? be in Vancouver. It could, could be Canada as well. Yeah. Cuz the Queen Victoria got to be some kind of commonwealth. Right, I'm thinking commonwealth. Yeah. I also thought while I also we thought... were I also saw Hong Kong just because uh, the developers of the game, um, Mountain, I think is the name, and they're they're based on Australia, so it seems like they they might be familiar. So that it, it might they might have just been focusing around that region of sorts. That's true. Yeah, the winter makes me think it's not Hong Kong. Now yeah. that we kind of talk through it, but Correct. yeah, let's let's settle on um, let's settle on me being right from the beginning. Uh, I actually now that we mention it, I think Vancouver is a good guess. I checked the Wikipedia page; it doesn't say so. Anyway. Huh. Uh, random Pacific Northwest city that we're in. Cascadia. There you go. Yeah. Tomato tomato. No. So the story of Florence is broken into 20 chapters and each chapter takes like between <laughs> two and five minutes. Some of them are super short 
and the longest one takes like i said five minutes or so it moves really really quickly from scene to scene um, in a game this short it's i think it's impossible to have bad pacing but the pacing is good moves along pretty quickly and breaking it up into chapters i think really helps with the kind of like mobile game aspect of this you know you have you're online somewhere you can play through one chapter of the game or if you're on the subway you can play through you know half of the game if you want to just For turn sure. it off when you're done at most you're going to lose like two minutes of progress especially since in each chapter there it's such a smooth flow like there really is no spot to kind of pause between the chapter so the fact that it's short helps i agree yeah. with the five minutes max and i think if anything the only reason it might be five minutes is if i'm sta pausing to listen to the music um which i'm sure which i know we'll talk about later but yeah it it, it flows very fast yeah it does the lead developer on the game his name is ken wong he said that he wanted to make a game that explored love and human emotions he wanted to make a game specifically like with the idea there's not going to be any violence or combat or anything like that and he was not happy with kind of like the lack of you know exploration of love and human emotions in other games and so i don't know i'm without going into spoilers i'm just going to say i think he did this really well i want to know how you guys feel about this i mean yeah the, you it's easy i think to say that there's not love and human emotion exploration in most games because like you know zelda doesn't really have a depression episode you know <laughs> but, um i think i think he did a really really awesome like, you can't help but feel, you know, just the way that he incorporates art and the music. It really makes you feel the game. It's really, I really compare it to like reading a book. You know, when you read a book, you kind of get more of a, a sense of like the feelings of the characters. This one did mm -hmm. a good job of that as well. The thing it kind of reminded me of was how anime has this stigma of that it's only like a children's like show or whatnot, but there can be some very deep elements of you know, human emotion and human and adult uh, um, like context uh, in, in some anime shows where it's not out of the question that like adults are only watching this in particular. And it makes, makes me think of the same way in terms of like how Ken took this with in terms of video gaming, where video gaming has obviously the stigma of it's just violence and guns and 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 gore and, and things like that. But you can also use it as like a, a beautiful visual storytelling mode to just talk about human emotion and things like that. And so I, I think he nails it. Yeah. I've, and I've said this on the show before, but video games, if they're going for that, like human emotion and stuff, it makes it a lot easier for me to connect with it than I can in most TV shows or movies because of that extra like interactive element that video games have. For sure. If a game has a good story with like heart behind it, I will connect with it much more than watching, you know, a TV show, even the best shows. It's just something about like the way that I consume stories. Mm -hmm. So yeah, Florence really, really succeeds in that. And we'll kind of talk about the puzzles now. And the puzzles that are in the game, this is your gameplay, basically. The puzzles are the way that are one of the ways that the developer kind of uh, conveys these emotions to you and makes you kind of feel them too. So each chapter has a, I, I mean, I'm calling them puzzles, but the, it's not like, you know, you're not doing anything as difficult as like a Sudoku or something like, it's not like that. Um but they are little interactive puzzles different in each chapter. And what they're doing is besides giving you some like interaction with the game, because it is a game, they are also carefully choosing like what the puzzle is and what you're doing to make you feel the emotions that Florence is feeling in the story. So for example, in an early chapter, I already said this is a game about a relationship. So there's a first date on the first date the puzzle is to kind of put these puzzle pieces together to build speech bubbles for what florence is saying but it's a first date so it's kind of awkward and the shapes are awkward and you have to put a lot of them together in order to finish 
one, you know, coherent thought and not fuck up your first date. So that's just an example of like what you're doing in the chapters. I think that the puzzles are generally really good. There's one that I think is bad and we'll talk about it in the spoiler section, but the rest of them I think are very number one, easy and number two, good at conveying that emotion. What do you guys think? Yeah, it's, it's a good, I, it was definitely a way to show off like sort of like the starter game element as well. Cause the, the, the puzzles are very easy. I think the hardest thing you actually have to do is remember that 18 plus three equals 21, for example, I think, that's the <laughs> I think that's the hardest thing you have to do. Um, yeah, but in a way, all the different puzzles kind of incorporate different, uh, like controls and, and different things that you do. Um, you know, so like one of the things is just, you know, pu basic puzzle matching. So you're using, you're using your, your, your thumbstick and you're just holding down a and, and moving the pieces around in another instance, you're, you're doing a, a classic side scroller game, uh, like from back in the, back in the good old days. Um, but it's also, it's a different element, a different way to, to interact with the game. So he, they do mix it. They do mix and match a little bit, which is kind of, which is great. And they do repeat some of the puzzles as well. Uh, but nothing, nothing, nothing outrageous in, in my mind. Well, I think even the repeat puzzles. So, you know, Dave, you're already talking about the speech bubbles in different interactions. The speech bubble game uh, has different shapes or different movements or the the background is different. And it gives a whole different vibe to what the conversation would be if there were words involved. Um, yeah. So I think I think that is pretty cool about it. Um, yeah, sorry, Nick said something that triggered a thought, and I completely lost it. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I will say that playing on your phone and using the touch screen, actually, I'm not sure if you're playing on Switch, if you can use a touch screen. I never want to touch my Switch screen, ever. Um, playing on the phone and using the touch screen for the puzzles is much, much um, easier they're they're clearly built to be done on a touch screen and like we all played it on switch and it, they work on switch it's not like they're difficult but just want to throw out there like if you're considering buying this game and you haven't already consider buying it on your phone because it's i think it's cheaper it's like three dollars and the puzzles are just a, a little bit more intuitive I on agree. a phone yeah, I agree. Like you, you talked about the puzzle thing with the speech bubble. Bubble. That's the perfect example of, of the advantage of having playing it on the mobile as opposed to Switch. Uh, on the Switch, yeah. you know, you you you're you're basically limited by the speed of the scroller, for example. So I'm just waiting for the scroller to get over to a side to grab one of the the pieces, uh, and then bring it all the way back to where it needs to go. And I can already mm -hmm. visualize it on the phone, and I can I I can see how much simpler and faster and and just overall more pleasant it would be and i'm nitpicking big time right like i'm not oh yeah i'm not going i'm not i wasn't going like apoplectic like thinking <laughs> like why is it so slow or anything like that but you know yeah push comes a shove yeah i i recommend the mobile as well yeah I, yeah i was just gonna say the switch one like you do kind of notice it a little bit but it is like not even close to being something that made me want to stop playing it's it comes yeah. from the experienced gamer side in, in a way like i it, you know heather I, I almost am curious about you like were you seeing that did you feel that at all like were you aggravated by the speed or is this something that like if you're just used to like gaming in general like is that might just be something you notice well as an extremely experienced game player um i can tell you that i don't know if i noticed it as much i think that the lag time kind of added to different elements for example, the one we've already we've been kind of circling around the first date awkward speech bubble, the fact that mm. it's harder to kind of put the shape in the perfect position. I don't know. adds an element of awkwardness, you know. Sure. Makes sense. There we go. So you're waiting for the scroller to reach the place where you're trying to get to just adds to that like <laughs> difficulty of trying to find the right thing to say in all of the situations where you have speech bubbles. Yeah. So. There we go.
next thing that kind of makes Florence stand out is the music, the soundtrack to it. And like I said, when I was talking about my history with the game, the soundtrack is what like brought me to it in the first place. This is the reason I played this game. I listen to this soundtrack when I'm at work sometimes, if I'm working. Um, I listen to a lot of games music when I'm at work because games music is mostly designed to be on in the background and not take up all of your attention. It's a life hack but, right there. Yeah. And yeah, it's it's a very, very good soundtrack. It's by uh, Kevin Penkin. That's the guy's name who made the soundtrack. I think it does a good job of matching the mood of the scenes and it does something really cool where it takes the like the main melody that you hear throughout the game and it puts that melody in different situations uh, to echo like how they're feeling in the scenes you you started off saying that you know we are a couple of cello fetishizers for example uh, i'm curious dave you've known me for a little bit did you know that i i've played the cello since fourth grade I had no idea. No. <laughs> so I, I saw that I saw that as the introduction and I'd silently laugh. I'm like, I don't think he knows this. But yeah, I've I've played cello since I was in fourth grade or so. Uh oh. and so I'm I'm a I'm a I'm a huge fan of, of the cello. And yes, this it's a beautiful soundtrack. Like it's easily it, the the like the best part of this game by far. Um not to say that everything else is bad or anything like that, but it's just like I sort of like I mentioned before, um you know, I was letting chapters just hang there for a second just because I wanted to keep listening to the cello uh, and just keep listening to the music. And and just I, I was happy to just let it keep going until Heather bothered me to to be like, OK, we need to listen to something else now. Um, <laughs> so beautiful music. Uh, I also I also wrote down the name of the cellist, Sophie Curtis. I just wanted to give her a shout out as well. Um, yeah, fantastic, for sure. Fantastic job on the cello. Yeah. Well, and then as a cello player, you noticed um some interesting elements that were kind of communicated through the notes in the cello. Oh, that, that I mean, not so, nothing cello specific per se, just, yeah. When we get into the spoiler section, uh, I was just something I, 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 I had noted. Um, okay. Yeah. Right on. Yeah. This is a soundtrack that I would recommend even. So if you're listening to this episode and you haven't played Florence and you still don't think you want to play Florence, at least go listen to the soundtrack, pull it up on YouTube. It's fantastic. Highly, highly recommended. And the music in the game kind of goes in tandem with the way the visuals work. And, oh, I am not an artist. I do not have great words to explain this, but the the visuals are very clean. You know, it's it's like cartoony. The, the visuals in the screen are very... Um, it's like minimalistic almost like mi art. yeah minimalistic it, there's not a lot of clutter and stuff on the screen it's it wants you to focus on the important things that are happening so it's very clean there's animation but the animation is really simple like only a few movements or like a repeating animo animation that plays when you're doing your puzzle and the other thing i want to kind of note is that it follows a very simple color scheme, but the colors will change throughout like the game. Like there's some black and white sections. There's some colorful sections. Um, you definitely notice when there's been a shift in like the, the tone of the colors in each scene. Basically the game creator was just a genius and every aspect of the game was designed intently to make you feel exactly what he wants you to feel. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It, the, it was one of those things in terms of like the artistic choices or whatnot that you know it's 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 a it's a particular design for a purpose it you know like the the best example i could think of is like when uh the legend of zelda skyward sword came out um you know it, that was a particular like graphic scheme as well and, and i i feel i i might be going off base slightly but it was like one of those things where people were complaining about the graphics but no the, the graphics were a particular choice for that game and they nailed it and same thing here yeah totally agree that like all of this is working in harmony so like the graphics by themselves are they do their job and i i think the music is like stand out the the music is the thing that you could take outside of this game and it would still be fantastic but like the graphics the animations the graphics sorry i said graphics already the graphics the animations the music and the puzzles all work together to 
like Heather said, really just focus on the emotion in the in that particular scene. The sum of the parts is greater than the whole. Is that the phrase? Yes. I think so. I hope so. That's the whole weird. the whole is greater than the sum of its parts. Yeah. The whole is greater than the sum of its parts. That's it. Oh boy. No. Yeah. It. Wish us luck at the <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You need diploma Cambridge, please. <laughs> yep. So we're going to give our final thoughts about Florence kind of in summary. Do we recommend it? Uh, I usually, some games I ask like, you know, what price point, but this, this game, like I already said, is $3. I don't need to, um, I don't need to tell you that this game is worth $3. So guests always go first. We'll give you guys a, uh, a shot each to give your kind of final thoughts about Florence. I think they should charge more. This is a lovely game. <laughs> um, yeah, we've played it th- through a couple of times. And like I said, I it's great for seasoned gamers, but also for people who would never get involved with games, like my father. <laughs> never get involved with a video game. But I think that this would be an interesting way to show him kind of that video games, it's just another medium, you know, to make it of it what you will. Um, yeah, so I recommend it. 10 for 10. I recommend it too for, um, honestly, I would almost say I recommend it simply just for the music. And granted, you can go find it on YouTube or whatnot, or just buy the soundtrack yourself. But uh, to be able to, to listen to the music with all the interaction interactive elements uh, combined, um, it's, a, it's a really wonderful experience um, for, for beginners and experts alike. Uh, and yes, for three three to five dollars or whatnot it's it's well worth the price and a nice change of pace from what people are normally would probably normally be playing in the in in the first place and there's this weird thing i know that like some people have where i think we all kind of got accustomed to apps on your phone being free and so like any app that you have to pay for a lot of people are just like nope i'm not i'm i will not pay 99 cents for this thing that's very good yep and uh, like I said, Florence costs $3 on your phone. And like, I know that some people are going to open up the app store and see that $3 and be like, nope, I don't pay for phone apps, but I really think you should. I, th- I think this is a game that like, just because of like the lack of commitment, the lack of money commitment, the lack of time commitment, you're going to get a story that's it's really, really, really well told with all of those elements we talked about before playing off of each other and i've played this game three times now i have been emotionally like super into it and impacted by it all three times even the time when i played it in kind of a detached way when i was taking notes at the same time i think the story is really touching i think they do enough with like the characterization and like we said the other elements in it play together so nicely that it's just a it's it's a one of a kind experience, I think. You call it a phone app, and to be fair, I, I'm one of those people who, yeah, I refuse to to buy uh pay for a phone app. Uh, I yeah, will pay it. I me will too. pay three dollars for a great video game, and that's exactly what this is. It also reminded me of the idea of like uh we have gotten accustomed to that because I I keep getting uh requests to subscribe to like the New York Times, for example, for like a dollar a month. Uh, yeah, that, that I can afford that, and yet I refuse. Like I'm, <laughs> yep. but it's now it's now just on principle alone. Like I know how good a deal that is, but yet nope, not happening. Sorry. That's our generation's version of get off my lawn. Pretty much. Yeah, it's. I, I think it's that thing. Like we've we've become accustomed to, like the newspaper costs ten cents, and um you know, phone apps are free and stuff like that. And then when someone asks you to pay $2 for it, you're like, absolutely the fuck not. No. Yeah. <laughs> but this game, uh, this game, I, you need to break through that and buy this game, I think, because it's a good, good experience. So we're going to do some housekeeping here before the spoiler wall. So if you're going to tap out now, I mean, like I said, this game t- takes like 40 minutes to play. So if you go buy it and download it and play it, We'll still be here when you come back. We exist outside of time and space in our podcast (laughs) forms. So thank you for listening. If you're going to tap out now, if you would like to support the show, the best thing you can do is tell people about it. But other than that, you can subscribe and leave a rating and review if your platform allows it. 
and spread the good word. Continue to spread the good word. I also do a podcast called A Top Three Podcast, where each week we pick a topic and we pick our top threes and discuss and make fun of each other and all of that good stuff. That podcast is a good time, so check it out if you want to hear me more. You want to hear me in your ears more often, there's another show. Go check that out. We are going to take a quick break. When we come back, it is spoiler time. back and it's spoiler time for Florence the way this spoiler section is going to go is we're just going to go through the chapters kind of in sequential order which is something that we normally don't do on the show but this game uh, this is the most natural way to go through it so starting in chapter one step chapter one is called adult life and this is Florence's daily life you ride the subway and Florence is on kind of a combination of Instagram and Twitter on the subway, as we do. You go to work, and you play this little kind of matching game. You kind of get Florence's job. She's doing some kind of accounting or something like that. You get a phone call from your mom. Your mom is very annoying, asking about... You don't get mom's dialogue. You just get Florence's responses, and like the responses are all like, no, I'm fine. I'm okay. No, you don't need to find a a boyfriend. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. And then Florence watches TV and she goes to bed. And that's, you know, that all happens in the span of three minutes. And then the chapter is over. Yeah, it's pretty simple mechanics. Um, I liked, (laughs) but I I did um, like the bit with the mom, um, just getting the idea of how, you know, she's just getting, being nag, nag, nag. Uh, the other thing I kind of noted was the the color palette that's being used initially was just, you know, kind of was going for like the dull slash bland of sorts, you know, just your everyday life, nothing, nothing interesting is going on. You're just, you're just kind of, you're coasting through life, so to speak. Uh, so, you yeah, know, it's pretty, pretty simple, straightforward, establishes everything pretty easily. Yeah. yeah. Well, no, not really. I mean the one thing that i thought was interesting is um and this is extends more than just this chapter but the game where one of the puzzle games is you are scrolling through her instagram for example and yeah i noticed that um the amount of instagram time that she has in her day changes as the mood and tone gets happier or sadder which i thought was quite interesting <laughs> Yeah, and if you if you look at the pictures that are coming up on her like Instagram feed, they're all pictures of people out partying or like pictures with like their boyfriend or girlfriend or like pictures of a dog and stuff like that. Dog it's gets all, me every time. <laughs> it's all kind of like setting up this like everyone else is having fun feeling that we get when we're looking through Instagram because you know well we don't need. I don't need to go in detail about that. We all know how, you know, that Instagram people's lives on Instagram look way more fun than they actually are. It just, I just remembered because yes, that was a bit of a, and also the color palette. Also, I'm just going to note that again, the Instagram photos were a lot more colorful and and things like that kind of evoking that as well. Yeah. I should have mentioned in the, like, uh, before the spoiler wall, we should have mentioned this. Maybe I'll cut this and move it. But we should have mentioned that Florence and Krish are not white. And this is one of the only games I've played where there's no white people in the entire game. And I I mean, it's kind of cool. You don't see that in a lot of games. It was, I don't know if it was like a deliberate choice because there's only really two characters in the game other than Florence's mom. But still, cool. And it's not something that's made a big deal of. Well, I'm always there for that. Like, yeah, you know, minority races 
the, the identity is always politicized whether you want it to be or not so to have like a yeah. biracial minority couple that doesn't have any impact on the storyline besides yeah. the fact that Chris tries sushi for the first time you know yeah exactly like that I really love you know it's always nice when you know you just see them and it's not it's not talked about you know what i mean like you don't have to you do can a, exist you, without having a it, bigger you don't have to talk you world. don't have to talk about like yeah i'm i'm not white and yeah he's you know he's uh he's south asian or or and what or whatnot um it's just it's just who they are and that's that's a, that's always nice to see nowadays so yep perhaps we could yeah. we, we, we put that behind the spoiler or whatnot but uh that's always nice to see yeah and for audience yeah. understanding <laughs> I'm Pakistani and Muslim and Nick is my fiance is uh, Jewish and from Florida. And <laughs> so we get put on the spot all the time about, oh, you're so different or, oh, there's this or there's that. And so mm -hmm. we have a different level of appreciation when it's like, oh, you can exist and have love and normal, quote unquote, normal couple issues that don't have to deal with, you know, with race. Yeah. Right. Right. We're not here to be a PBS special. We have our identities, right. but, you know, we have more things to talk about as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I just thought that was kind of cool and something I noticed. And like I said, it's not like there's this cast of like 30 characters in the game. There's only three, <laughs> you know, but still <laughs> cool. Yeah, I'm going to cut I'm going to cut that into when we were talking about the story earlier. Um Okay, chapter two is called Memories, and Florence is kind of looking through her stuff. Uh, Florence has that thing that I think a lot of people have, which is just the box with old stuff that you don't want to throw away, and she finds one of her old art projects, and what you're doing is you use the kind of touchscreen to like drag and drop these, uh, I don't know, like the, like tissue paper or something that you're gluing onto a an art project and you make her like old elementary school art project and you can see in the memory that like she really enjoys doing art and then her mom comes in and yells at her to study and then it switches to you're not making art anymore you're doing math problems and this introduces this uh this clock mechanic uh, where you grab the hour hand and you spin it around and time passes as Florence gets older and she kind of is wistfully remembering, um, I don't know, younger days or just remembering how much she used to enjoy art or something like that. Yeah, the clock is definitely a wild concept of it. You know, any type of um, imagery of a clock moving forward can have <laughs> all sorts of wild connotations around it. Um, yep. Actually, side note, the most famous clock in Cambridge is was made as a midlife crisis. And whenever it strikes the hour, it's actually a sound of a coffin lid slamming shut. And oh. so, <laughs> <laughs> so clock imagery is powerful with, you know, life disappearing. Um, one thing I'll say about the art project that she does is the way it's set up is it's kind of an outline on one side of the screen of a sailboat and on the other side of the screen it'll be like a circle with a purple spiral or a green triangle or yeah um you know a red or like polka dots or yeah. a heart or something so like that the first time i played this game i didn't realize that it was like a tissue paper shape that goes on top of the design i thought it was like oh you click the green star and then you click this part of the sailboat and that whole thing will turn green so there was an interesting element where while you're helping Florence do her elementary school art, you are also experiencing creation of elementary school art. You know, you're back in that mindset where you're like, oh, cool, this shape looks like this, or maybe it will look like this. Like you can even change the color palettes on it. And it's it's a really cool way that the game developer brings you into the moment. Mm -hmm. this is a chance for you to also just be uh creative artistically because you can you can just take those shapes and you can put them wherever you want on the on the sailboat and also you do a butterfly later as well uh and you know yeah. no, no, no two are alike so you can you can like you can actually have some some artistic uh fun 
uh, in this little thing. And these shapes are then seen later on uh, in throughout the rest of the story as well. Uh, so, yep. yep, fun little, fun little, fun little puzzle. It's not even a puzzle. Fun little art project that you get to do. Uh, <laughs> I'll just note right now, this game makes art seem like the easiest thing to do in the world. And I have no artistic creativity. <laughs> yeah, I have no artistic bone in my body whatsoever. So this Same. is my one chance to be a, a decent artist. So I'm, I'm <laughs> taking it. Yeah, we all get A's on our third grade art project um, by yeah, right. putting wrapping tissue paper onto a butterfly or something like that. <laughs> And then, yeah, it all gets wiped away. Um, Mom comes in and yells at you to study. And you have to do your math homework. And that, I guess that kind of leads into where Florence is now. Because like we said earlier, she's got some kind of accounting job or something like that. So, um, wasn't able to follow her dream, we'll say. As foreshadowing for later. The one thing I'll... Yeah, the one thing I'll also add in terms of like color palette stuff, because that's apparently just going to be my my theme throughout this uh, podcast is, you know, she but norm, normal, boring or adult life. And then she opens the closet and out pops this this memory box. And the memory box is the one thing that's colored bright pink. Um, and yep. so it's like it's just an easy signal of like, oh, yeah, here's a happy memory. You get the, you do the art project. Then mom comes in and the color palette once again shifts immediately back to normal, boring adult life. So really, really making it really making it clear with the coloring um you know how you're supposed to be feeling and, and things like that yep and i'm happy to report i got all the math problems correct all of the two digit <laughs> addition problems not just not just four plus two we're talking you know 14 plus seven 18 plus three 18 plus three yeah. was the last was the final boss so yeah, uh, the spoiler, final boss. <laughs> we're in we're in this we're in the spoiler wall, but you know, final boss yeah, exactly. guys, eighteen plus three equals twenty one. Because they give you eighteen and twenty one, solve for X. Yeah, exactly. So you're welcome. We I'm yeah. terrified to report that Nick got one of those problems wrong. Uh chapter three is called music. And chapter three, uh a terrible tragedy happens to Florence. She's walking down the street, listening to music, looking at Twitter, and her phone dies. Oh, shit. I never. So Jesus she Christ. has to take out her headphones. Oh, no. <laughs> you have to walk down the street and listen to the, the traffic noises and be alone with your own thoughts. No, Fuck thank that. you. She was at a good part of um, the top three podcast. You know, she wanted yeah. to hear what your top three <laughs> pasta shapes were. <laughs> exactly. And so her phone dies. She has to take out her headphones. And then uh, she hears music coming from down the road. And the way this is kind of gamified is there are music notes on the screen, these golden music notes. And I, if I'm remembering right, Nick, you're the color palette guy. This is either very, very muted or this scene is in black and white at the beginning. It. It's black and white. Uh, it's, and I'm then pretty sure it's black and white. Yep. Is, and then the, the music is gold. And then you mm -hmm. meet Krish, who's in color, and his cello is also gold. Yeah. So these music notes come up on the screen. You tap them with your finger on the touch screen. And Florence follows the song. And eventually she floats up into the air. And she floats. And suddenly the screen is full of music notes as you get closer to the source, and that's where you first see Krish, who is playing cello in the park, kind of like a, a busking or something like that. So they meet. Well, she sees him. They don't meet yet. Yeah. Florence goes home, and the scene ends with her kind of just sitting there thinking about him with a smile on her face. A yellow heart. I wonder what that yellow heart signifies. Yep. It's funny you said how the touch uh, on the on the phone... Um, you only had to touch the notes on on the switch you act it actually turns into like an old school school like side scroller so uh oh. she starts she starts floating like she first hears a couple of the notes and you know she's obviously she's interested she's 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 peaked she's she's keen she wants to hear more and <laughs> so she's getting closer and then the more notes appear and suddenly she's transported uh from the music now she's literally floating in the air because from with the music and now there's so mm -hmm. many, you can actually control her up and down. And so it turned into like an old school side side scroller trying to capture all the music notes until you finally meet Krish. So there's a fun little distinction between the two uh, ways to play the game. Interesting. 
So chapter four is called Crash. And this scene begins where Florence is riding her bike down the street. And she thinks she sees Krish kind of walking into a store as she's riding down, like maybe on the other side of the road. She is distracted and she crashes her car. This is exactly like the Seinfeld episode where they see the woman with the fake boobs and uh, get into a car crash. So she crashes her bike and the whole like scene goes out of focus and it brings up these kind of camera lens focus wheels that you have to use to put the scene back in focus. Um, I like how this kind of captures that moment where like if you are riding a bike or driving a car and you think you see something someone you know or just something interesting on the street how your attention goes like you know zero percent watching the road and 100 percent watching that thing you saw and so you have to focus a few of these pictures and the last one is uh this <laughs> out of focus angel that's come to help you up and you put it in focus and it's krish and they chat and krish gives florence his number and that's the end of chapter four yeah heather's first thought when she saw that was concussion uh which fair enough <laughs> yeah uh, probably you know, out, out of focus the out of focus stuff was cool um the music was great with this especially because you know they had it all you know gargled and, and things like that and as you get clearer and clearer the music is clear as well so well done there um and oh that was the other thing i knew where i was like there's no way this is uh in seattle because krish's number is you know not even close to any kind of american number and it, starts uh, with, okay. it, starts, it starts with a zero which i've now learned in britain is how uh the british have their numbers as well um if you if you're giving it to an international number you do plus four four or if you're doing it to a giving it to a local British person, it's you you go zero and then your number. So that was another uh, fun little clue about that. Gotcha, gotcha. Chapter five is called First Dates, and this is the scene we talked about before the spoiler wall. This is where Krish and Florence go on their first date. And you have that speech bubble puzzle mechanic. You have all these different pieces of a speech bubble. I think in the first date section, each one has six pieces. Uh, you have to put them together and kind of form your thoughts. And has, uh, as the date goes along, it starts out awkward. The shapes are, you know, weird. They don't, I don't, you know, I'm not going to say it's difficult, but it does take a little bit of time to put together a coherent thought as it does on a first date. And then as the scene goes along, it gets easier and easier until at the end of the date, it's literally just the speech bubble is already made. You just have to move it into the right position. And then they have their first kiss. I will say that this is a great example of how the puzzles add to the storyline, because while you're working to put together your awkward thoughts and phrases for the first date, um, Krish is sitting there smiling and happy and his thought bubbles or speech bubbles come up right away you know and so that's yeah. like the perfect um way that the puzzle adds more intent into it like you know you're like you're like you said it's not hard but it still takes a minute to put the pieces together but meanwhile your opponent quote unquote yeah. is like <laughs> rapid fire <laughs> yeah, yeah. It 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 was fun seeing how the the speech bubble um, puzzles uh, improved, you know, improved quote unquote uh, as each of the dates progress and whatnot. Um, on the at least on the switch, it, the first were like eight, and yes, like you said, the shapes were slightly not not coherent, give or take or or whatnot. Um, and thinking of it from being in Florence's shoes, since this the game is about Florence, um, yeah, like you know, she's got first date anxiety or or whatnot. And she's probably thinking in her head that this here's this this uber confident, smart, smart, handsome dude. Um, and it shows even in just in like the the pictures uh, on their dates and whatnot. And as it gets as the game gets uh, as the dates progress and they get to know each other better, uh, the shapes are way more distinct to, as you said, you're you're little at the end, you're just pressing a button and boom, it's like so they've, they've nailed the communication between each other. Good analogy for also learning how to communicate with somebody else, you know. Yeah, it, it gets easier as you get to know them for sure. And yeah, I didn't I didn't notice how Krish was kind of always 
having an easier time at this. And it goes to show just a little bit of their like difference in personalities. So yeah, um, that's why I picked this scene for the kind of example before the spoiler wall, because this this scene perfectly shows how the developers were thinking of like, how does this puzzle reinforce what's happening in the story? For sure. And this first date scene is a great example of that. Yep, absolutely. Chapter six is called Dreams. And this is where Florence and Krish are talking about their uh, dreams. So the kind of puzzle here is you have a picture of what their dream is and you're wiping away the top like a scratch, like a scratch off lottery ticket or like, you know, maybe think of this as a picture and it's covered in dust or something like that. And you, you use the touch screen or the, you know, control stick on the switch to wipe it away. You find out that Florence or Krish wants to be a concert cellist and Florence remembers her dream, which is to uh, be an artist from a couple chapters ago. And I think this chapter is good to kind of visualize, like you got to know your new boyfriend or girlfriend on a kind of surface level. And now you're getting deeper. You're digging deeper into like who they are, what they want in their life. Um, so we're past the spoiler wall. So I yeah. will say Krish stuck. And this is one of the first examples of it. Cause when they're together, all he can talk about is himself and his dreams and his goals and his aspirations. And he wants to be this and that. And it's not until she gets home and she's alone that she's looking in a mirror and she's like, Oh wait, I have a dream too. And then that's right. There's no point in the game where she actually is talking about herself to Krish. Like Chris is always the one that's telling her about him. And, you know, you can yep. spend that however you want. At some point, he osmosis is her passion for art. But this is a good example of like, you know, that's a huge red flag. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Good call. Yeah. It, um, the this this the the wiping away on the switch thing. Yeah, semi annoying, I suppose. But yeah, it's it's fun to it's fun to to wipe it away. Uh, you know, he they're they're sitting somewhere and he's talking about like his dream and as he and you can see him like still like talk like as Heather would put it, yapping away um <laughs> as you as you're clearing away the picture. But so it's it's cool to 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 put it just to um to to bring it out. Uh I, I'll even go further be beyond his dream being wanting to be like a like a concert cellist or whatever, he wants to be a cello superstar, like Yo-Yo Ma style, basically at the end because he's uh -huh. got yeah, he's rocking the, he's rocking the shades. He's got like a got magazine. The guns. Yeah, he's got he's got uh um he's got like a magazine with his face on it. Like he wants like cello superstardom. So I can do mm -hmm. nothing but support his dream on that. Yeah, yeah, good call. Chapter seven is called Inspiration. And this chapter begins where you I, you're playing as Krish and he's cleaning his room, oh, so that so Florence can come over, and uh, his room is a fucking mess, as you know a single dude's room tends to be. I'm projecting here, but you know. I don't worry. Uh, <laughs> um, uh, so Florence comes over. He uh, didn't clean perfectly though and Florence sees kind of a crumpled up pamphlet for a music academy under his bed and they get to talking and your mechanic is a like tap 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 as fast as you can and you're literally push Krish, uh, Krish through the front door of the academy and um, well first I'll, I'll kind of finish the story here you do the wipe away uncovering the picture thing again and it's a sketch of Krish that Florence has drawn. So she's getting back into art a little bit and she has kind of pushed Chris to like follow his dream too. And I like the imagery of her pushing him through the door, not him walking in uh, under his own volition. And that's going to play into the story later. Yeah, this, um, this is hilarious. The game play where you're cleaning Chris's room it's basically it shows an aerial shot of a really messy boy room and you have to click on the messes and then they and that's how you clean them. But one of my favorite details is on his bookshelf, there's a superhero figurine 
And when you click that, it turns into a plant. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. That's, that's, how you, how, that's how you impress a girl. That's how you get the ladies. Yep. Get rid of those yep. toys and bring in some plants. I'm all about sustainability, yep, baby. <laughs> girls don't like superheroes. They like cactuses. <laughs> I need something to give me some fresh air here and now. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I felt seen also with the, cause I, I also liked the idea that or I also liked the concept of her pushing him into, to go apply to the Royal Academy of music because, uh, well, Heather over here is also one who will push me to do things that will advance my career or, uh, advance my life, so to speak. So I definitely, definitely saw myself in Krish there. Uh, 100%. Moral of the story, yeah. of hetero men, clean your room and find yourself a girl that encourages you. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. I, I like the I like the imagery of her pushing him toward this because like when you're in a relationship and you care about somebody, these things do come up where you kind of like push them in a direction that will that you think will be helpful for them. Like, you know, this is what you want. Go do it. This is what you want. And as it turns out in this story, that was not uh, a great life choice for Krish. It did not make him happier. And, you know, it just, just kind of like you have good intentions for like the things you suggest to your, you know, um, partner, but it's maybe it's not always the best thing to push them toward that or like there can be kind of negative consequences for that. So I do like the, I like how it's not Krish like saying, yes, I'm going to go to the academy. And then, you know, first day of school picture and he walks proudly in the front door. She's literally pushing him. So, you know, it's so interesting you said that because I read it in a different way. Um, okay. In my in in my campaign of Krish sucks as a human. Um, <laughs> okay. I thought that he just wanted easy stardom, right? He just wanted easy success. He wanted to you know, play for the pigeons and get discovered. But when he had to put in work, then he was like, ugh, this is so hard. Work is hard. Um, as yeah. opposed to just, that wasn't the right direction. I just viewed it as Chris just doesn't have grit or commitment. Yeah, I can see both sides. Uh, like like the way <laughs> that, that you viewed it, Dave, and the way that Heather viewed it. Um, yeah, there there is a thing. There is something to it in terms of like, yeah, she she pushes him to do something. It's you know he he clearly had interest in doing it, and she pushed him. And you know, like the the normal idea in terms of like storytelling would imply that like that that was the move. You know, she pushed him into into it, or she you know she she just gave him the gentle nudge that she he just needed uh, to actually go ahead and do something that he wanted to do in the first place. Um, and there right. you go, it works out. And in this case, you know, since we're in the spoiler alert, like in this case, it doesn't work out. It's actually w maybe it wasn't the right choice. Although Heather could, you know, Heather's perception might imply something else as well. So I can I can definitely see both sides. But I do, regardless of which one it is, it you know, it it is a nice little thing. This is your chance, dear listeners. Comment on this episode on the podcast <laughs> platform and let us know. Hashtag which Team Heather. Hashtag did. Team Dave. Yeah. <laughs> All right, chapter eight is called Inspiration. And chapter eight is kind of like the overview of like the honeymoon period in their relationship. So what you're doing is you have this uh, map and there are pins in the map and or there's like circles and you click them and it gives you a Polaroid. And when you're on your phone, you have to shake your phone to develop the Polaroid. I don't remember on the switch if you have to move it around the screen to develop move it. it. On the screen. Yeah. So you're developing these pictures of the things they do on their their dates. And it's kind of the classics uh, going hiking, going to an art gallery, skateboarding for the first time, meeting Krish's parents, going on a sushi date. Um, Florence introduces Krish to the wonders that is sushi, going to a concert. And then you do this and then like there's like, you know, 30 other pictures that automatically develop for you on the map. And it just shows like this, I don't know, one minute little section of the honeymoon period in a relationship where you're just going and doing stuff together. Everything is awesome. Everything you do is great because you're with that other person. And yeah, that's chapter eight. Yeah. Everything is awesome. Everything is new. Uh, you, you're you're trying out new things uh, with each other, uh, yeah. Or you're doing the same thing, but now you're doing it with a new person and things like that. Yep. 
easy, mm-hmm. easy, easy example of everything is awesome and, and whatnot. Now I'm thinking about the Lego movie. And once again, everything is about Krish. You go meet Krish's family. It's Krish's first sushi. It's, you know, going on a hike is the only kind of thing that's neutral ground. Um, I, uh, you, push, you go I'm to an art gallery. Yep, I was about to say, I pushed back on that. They they went to the art gallery. It's a high right. bar, you guys. That's yep. right. That's true. That was a high <laughs> relationship bar for Chris to ascend to. Yeah. Skateboarding is also Chris's hobby. He's the one who has a skateboard in his apartment. It certainly so. skewed towards Chris. I, you know, grant, granting that. Yeah, I can uh, I can agree with some of those. They But... You know, Chris doesn't seem like the art gallery type that's it's been established as Florence's thing. So she gets one in there. And, you know, if if you're following along with Heather's read on this, you know where this is. This story's going. So. Hashtag yeah. Heather. Chris sucks. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Chapter nine is called Groceries. And this is they're at the grocery store and they have their first fight. A. You're doing the speech bubble puzzle from before, but earlier where the pieces of the speech bubble were rounded and friendly, now they get a bit more pointed. They're not quite sharp, but they are kind of like square. They're right angles. And so it's a little bit more pointed. And what I really like about this is once again, Krish's speech bubbles kind of go really quickly. Like he knows what he's saying. And you are quite literally racing him to get your points done and get your points out before he can say too much. And I think this is a just using that same dialogue mechanic from earlier in the game. I think this is an excellent representation of being in a fight and not really listening to the other person. You just want to get your points out. Well, it's interesting because, you know, each chapter has its own title card for lack of a better phrase and on this one you can already on the title card you can hear like an ominous sense in the music like grocery Mm -hmm. store dun 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 (laughs) (laughs) yeah only bad things happen at the grocery grocery store grocery stores don't deserve that kind of music so clearly something else is about to happen yep I agree the the puzzles thing was cool you know going from the disjointed like getting more disjointed like just the opposite Um, and I liked the idea like like I, I made the joke as I was like doing going in the little mini game basically against Krish as Florence, um, like who's like who's going on tilt now? You know, they're, they're literally going on tilt as 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 you keep doing it. So I kind of like that, like that play on play on the 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 term, uh, so to speak. Um, I don't know if we were if we were already going to advance to the part about where they you know at the end of I think at the end of it they make up or they, like they they make up over the fight. Yeah, they do. Yeah, that's yep. in this chapter. Yeah, yeah. Um. Yeah, I, I just kind of, I was, I, I, I just like the idea of in terms of like the music, like she went, like they're facing, they're facing away from each other at first. She makes the first move. She turns around to face him, and the piano comes in all nice and light, and then he turns <laughs> yeah. around and in comes the cello, and of course the cello because you know he's the cellist and whatnot. So I, I, just, I found that I found that part a little cute as well. It's kind of reminiscent of um, the Magic Flute, you know, where was it the Magic Flute? No. Oh, I'm so sorry. The classic music piece about Peter and the wolf, where each instrument represents a different character. So when you hear like the piccolo, it means this character. And this this is similar where you hear the cello and that's Krish's voice. Yeah, for sure. And they do make up at the end and they use what I assume they bought at the grocery store. It looks like they make some kind of curry or something like that. And they they make up and everything's good and take a note of like what they're eating here this is something that i kind of noticed later on in the story so they make like a homemade curry they cook together they have a nice uh, a nice time after they make up from the fight once again they make a dish for krish about krish or to help he, krish or after his emotions her, or he's teaching her yeah that's still based on him good <laughs> I don't want to accuse you of being racist here, Heather, but I like curry, and I'm not South Asian. <laughs> wow, Chapter 10 Dave, is called... wow. <laughs> <laughs> Chapter 10 is called Moving In, and this is six months later. It tells you on the, the title card, six months later, Krish moves in, and you get kind of a uh, an 
unpacking the boxes mini game and what you're doing is you're moving um Krish's stuff into Florence's apartment so I already know what angle Heather is going to take on this but there's not enough room for everything and so what you have to do is put some stuff into storage some of Florence's stuff into storage in order to make room for some of Krish's stuff and or you can just not do that you can you can put Krish's stuff into into storage and kind of just put a few of his things around and this is I like for me personally I've never moved into someone's apartment like while they were still living there uh, we have moved into a new place together at the same time but this does show that you know all that decision making you have to do where you decide where things go and which <laughs> you know some of my stuff is you know not fitting the motif of the interior in the the interior decorating and so that has to go in storage or go in another room where it's not as visible you know so it's a kind of cool little unpacking mini game and then in the story later on uh, in this chapter krish goes to an audition for the i guess the music academy and he gets florence a watercolor set as a gift and that's the end of chapter 10 um so coming out of left field for you here one of the items that you unpack from krish is the action figure that you hid in exchange for a plant earlier yep and so i thought that was quite cute you know there's all these little symbolisms that you know even you may have to play this game multiple times to even pick up oh this is the action figure and it comes you hide it at first but it comes out later um Mm -hmm. It's also funny because there's a scene where you're unpacking his stuff into the kitchen and again, choosing what stays, what goes into storage. And there's all these little things like she drinks tea, he drinks coffee. You know, they both have a toaster. Which toaster should stay? They both have the yeah. same <laughs> spice jar. Um, so that was that was really cute. Yeah. And, you know, no wrong answers. So I had fun triggering Heather by just dumping all of Florence's stuff into storage and putting <laughs> and she was getting mad at me so uh yeah it it, it, it i'm with you i i um you know we we moved into a new place together as well uh you never you never moved in with me or i never moved in with you no but um, you did have that moment where i decided what was gonna go up and what was gonna go into storage yeah like that's that true. new orleans um nick has this oh, sister and this new orleans gin goblin uh witch and it scares me. It looks it's, a, scary. It's, an abstract, it's an abstract picture of a woman's face, but okay. So I um I I decided that we should display it behind the wine fridge. <laughs> yeah. So that there we had a, that's a great example of us compromising in which I agree that Heather's right. <laughs> yeah. I have uh I have a lot of my things that I think are very cool. And they are showing off how cool they are inside of a backpack where they've been for the last four years. So, <laughs> yeah, that kind of thing. Uh, it's interesting. But there there are some, like, you know, actual, uh, like, heartfelt decisions here. Like, for, for one of the things you're unpacking is a picture of Krisha's family. Uh, there's already a picture of Florence's family on the bookshelf. So what do you, you need to get rid of something to you know, display the picture of Krish's family. It's his house too, you know. Some of his stuff gets to go on display. There's the action figure. There's, um... The cricket bat. Oh, I... The what? The cricket bat. Yeah, a cricket bat. The skateboard. There is, um... Mm -hmm. The... Yeah, the statue of the elephant, the the Hindu god that I cannot remember the name of. Heather's got you. I don't know, maybe. No, no, no. She's, and... she's saying it right now. Like, what's what's the name oh. of the elephant god, baby? Ganesh. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Showing my ignorance here on the podcast for all to hear. And so what I ended up doing was I picked what I thought was like most important to Krish, and I ended up just putting all the books in storage, uh, except for one shelf of books. So. But you are nicer than Nick. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. No. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Florence. There's a new man in well, town. I, uh, <laughs> she has like a bike pump that's taking up a ton of space, and Seriously. it's like you can put a 
you can keep a bike pump in the closet. You don't need to display that in your apartment. So <laughs> why not? Chris can have his uh, his cricket bat out there or something. You never know when you need to carry a cricket bat around like the guy in Spinal Tap and smash a TV every now and then. You what? might need it. Absolutely. <laughs> and before we head into just a short little break, we're halfway through the story. I want to give a shout out to an indie game that I... I shouted out on the podcast before. It's called Unpacking, and it's this chapter where you're unpacking the stuff, but that's the entire game, and it's much more in-depth, much, much, much more detail, so many more things to unpack, and what that game does is it uses the stuff that you take with you when you move as a vehicle for storytelling and character development. So you start out when the main character is a little kid, you kind of unpack her room as maybe she's moving into a house and gets her own room for the first time. And you you see the things that she has. And then some of those she takes with her when she goes to college and stuff like that. And you get the entire character's like story, life story up until uh, like, you know, adulthood, 30s, something like that only through this mechanic of unpacking boxes and the stuff that we take with us. I think that that's really cool, and it reminded me of this chapter in Florence. So I want to give that game a shout-out. It is on Switch, it is on PC, and maybe other consoles. I know it's on Game Pass also. So anyone listening, if the unpacking thing sounds like an interesting storytelling device, which I'm telling you it is, check out the game Unpacking. It's a good shot. I've heard good reviews about that game as well. So, yeah, uh, suddenly, now that you bring it up like that, I might have to go pick it up myself. Did you hear those yeah. reviews from a random podcast about video games? <laughs> a random podcast that starts with T and rhymes with ales from the backlog? <laughs> We're going to take a little break. We're going to listen to some music, and when we come back, we'll give the second half of the story. All right, we're back, and it's time for Chapter 11. Chapter 11 is called Happy Together. They eat breakfast together. Uh, This is basically the same routine from Chapter 1. You eat breakfast, go on the train, go to work, and then go home. But this time, it's good. Her normal routine is good. (laughs) Eating breakfast together. Uh, She's on the train. She's not looking at Twitter. She's texting with Krish. When she's at work, you don't have to do the matching puzzle. It does it automatically, and the work time just flies by without any input from you. And the chapter ends with Florence kind of adding to that sketch by painting a picture of Krish. Just another perfect example of how easy art is and why. And so (laughs) I got to live my dream being like, wow, with a few swipes of the swipes of the thumb i've I've just created a brilliant sketch of krish like <laughs> yeah man being an artist is so easy it's incredibly easy <laughs> this is my plan i'm going to become a world famous rich artist by just doing this by uncovering like literally swiping to uncover beautiful works of art that other people have created and i take the credit and i get the money and yeah, that's my plan. It's like the middleman between art restoration and art forgery. I think it's a good plan. <laughs> I was going to say art thievery. Yeah. <laughs> you, could, you could probably make an app for that somehow. Like you just like get like, you know, random like famous pieces of art and have it do that and then add some fun facts in there and whatnot. Like someone, you probably make that an app somehow. I don't know how you make money off it, but 
There's something there. I'll throw it into my entrepreneur class and see what and we'll see what they say. Yeah, yeah. You just graduate right there on the spot, I think. I think so. Yeah, I, th I think if it's a moneymaker like that, I, I think I get my diploma <laughs> immediately. I like in this chapter how it shows Florence's routine and how like when you're in a happy relationship, you can have a shitty job, you can have boring parts in your life, but like, you know, that stuff becomes easier because of how well the relationship's going. Yeah, life, life or routine is easy when suddenly you're in love and you get someone to to come home to and and hang out with and and have fun and and things like that. Suddenly your your boring monotonous job is can can sometimes fly by for sure. Okay. But, you know, not everything is about finding a relationship. And you could also argue that maybe it there's color because not she's in a relationship that's happy, but also because there's just something else going on. You know, instead of like getting stuck in a rut and doing the same old thing every day now it's like oh today we're gonna go out for sushi today we're making curry and all of a sudden like the you find joy in the little things yeah that's true she has and she also has um she's getting excited about hobbies again and stuff and for sure. i can personally say like you know having a bad day at work is a lot easier when i have my hobbies to come home to i mean i i I'm just like constantly really excited about, you know, the next episode of like doing this podcast and talking to my friends, Heather and Nick about a video game I love makes that, you know, that shitty Friday a lot easier to deal with. No doubt. For sure. Yeah. Did you have a shitty Friday? No, it was fine. <laughs> but <laughs> um, chapter 11 is called Happy Together. No, no, no. Chapter 12 is called Routine. Wait, hold on. Yeah, no, you're right. You had yeah. it there. Chapter 12? Yeah, yeah. We're, on, yeah. we're on chapter 12, Routine. Okay. Chapter 12 is called Routine, and it is the same as chapter 11, but things are getting a bit colder. The colors are getting colder. Um, Florence's facial expression, the joy is kind of leaving. You have to do her work matching game this time just uh kind of shows you they take two chapters and like i'm acting like they take a long time to develop this it's like seven minutes but you know yeah. two chapters in a row first chapter everything is amazing goes by really quickly the second one chapter 12 things are getting colder and it's one year later uh they note in the chapter as well okay so one they've, year they've been later. living together for sense. about a year yep this chapter yeah. um nick felt personally victimized by yeah, I was personally <laughs> so one of the elements they show in terms of like uh, things are not going in so hot is you know as you had already alluded to um, you know they were making home cooked meals together they were making curry or things like when that. when they were happy and when they were happy yeah and to now one year later and they've been living together and now they're in let's say like a rut so to speak and now they're just eating pizza that they yeah, really just bought exactly in. I, I'm personally affronted by that because uh, you know who doesn't like pizza. Uh, I, I, and I don't view that as not trying. So uh, that's if I have one grip about this game, it, it's that Ken Wong. How dare you, sir? And I said, well, now you know what I mean when I say let's order pizza. Today's a pizza day. <laughs> yeah, this this chapter, like I don't even not knowing the story. I wasn't even sure that I thought like, oh, the relationship's going sour in this chapter. I just thought like, you know, you're in your routine and you don't, I mean, I, yeah, maybe years not into a relationship. Going sour you're not just is probably like, not the way to put it. Sorry. Yeah. You're not just like going on dates all the time. And like, as you kind of get deeper and deeper into a relationship, you do settle into a routine as a couple. And those like weekdays, you know, maybe you're not doing fun stuff all the time. Maybe everyone is tired and you just want to order pizza. I don't personally see anything wrong with that, like Nick said, but this is a sign, you know, once you know what's happening later, this is a sign of like, maybe they got into this routine and they didn't, neither of them made a great effort to like kind of make things fun or find new things to do. They just kind of fell into this routine. Yeah, I mean, there's one scene where 
they're standing next to each other um but doing their own thing i can't remember what chris is doing probably something stupid and uh, <laughs> florence florence is on her phone and i don't know like that's not a negative point you know like nick and i will be doing our own things and sitting on the couch together but that doesn't oh, yeah that's not a reflection of us being in a fight or having a bad day it's actually a sign of a healthy relationship that you're able to like pursue your own interest without it impacting your relationship i want yeah 100 percent. i wonder if we're we're influenced by the fact that we know how this this game ends and that's why we're we're seeing like we're we're looking more into like this particular chapter in 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 a way um because yeah like none of us all of us agree that like ordering in pizza from time to time is is not it does not mean the relationship is is in the shitter or anything like that um the other the things i noted that would maybe continue that implication though would be like it seems like like chris is like you know let himself go a little bit like his beard has grown a bit it's a bit more like scraggly so to speak um I, I swear he looks fat in like one of the photos where he's like like or one of those scenes where he's like you know brushing his teeth or something like that so like there there's, see, there's some implications of that um and and things like that yeah. but to be fair florence is the same way like her hair has gotten longer and it looks um unbrushed which again is not a big deal but you know everything in this game has a meaning <laughs> yeah as i sit here people listening to the show can't see me but my beard is getting pretty uh <laughs> unkempt i've been thinking for like four days like hey man you gotta trim that shit up you're gonna be going out in public soon <laughs> i'm i'm doing my teaching online right now so you know Anyway, I I don't know like that this scene was supposed to show you like this isolated incident like oh fuck they ordered pizza the relationship is doomed it's it's more like you know this is maybe this is what they're doing every single day and they're not doing anything fun anymore it's all just routine now right they're not trying like she doesn't even um, you, you see Krish playing the cello as part of school but you're not seeing her do anything with art. Yeah. So she's still going to work and stuff like that. Chapter 13 is called Erosion. And if that title card doesn't give you a hint, well, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> you do that uh, clock spinning thing again. You spin the clock forward and it kind of starts out with a picture of them, super happy couple. And when you're done spinning it, they are basically indifferent. You get a picture of Krish playing the cello uh, happily. But it's that wipe away game again, and you wipe it away, and he is very stressed, uh, very unhappy with his cello playing with his situation. You spin the clock again, and it shows Florence's watercolor set on the desk, and as you spin the clock, more and more books and magazines and stuff get piled on top of it, showing that she is not really pursuing her interest anymore. Yeah, I, this so this is the scene where I I know like Heather pointed out the thing I've noted in terms of like the notes. So with Chris's uh, with Chris's memory, it starts off golden and and happy, and you know he's playing the cello love, delightfully and and things like that. And as you scroll away, uh, you know you it starts off with like some basic like single and eighth notes or whatnot, and then uh the music notes that are coming out when you wipe it away, and he's now working at like the Royal Academy or whatnot. Uh, a lot more a lot more intense like they've now gone to like 16th notes or 32nd notes uh there's yeah. a lot more sharps and flats in there so he clearly is not playing well and things like that so that was just a cute little interaction to show you know obviously like the 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 change in time and, and things like that another example of chris just wanted to be discovered by pigeons in the park and didn't want to do any hard work because now he has to play <laughs> complicated music he's unhappy <laughs> I'm just going to throw this out there. I don't want to do any hard work. I want to get discovered and get rich and famous instantly. I don't want to put in the work. There's nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that. <laughs> I, want, I want Heather now to go have like a personal interview with Ken Wong because I, I want her to sit, sh throw all these grievances <laughs> at him and, and see how he responds. Chapter 14 is called Fight. And again, title card. Telling you. <laughs> title card. I see what you did there. They get into a fight. Oh, oh, okay. I get it now. the The light bulb, the light bulb flickered for a few seconds, but now it's on. 
Um, Krish and Florence get into a fight. And where the speech bubbles were kind of light colors earlier, almost like pastel, almost, um, they are bright fucking red this time. And the shapes are not round edges anymore. They're not even right angles anymore. They are points. And there is no other color in the entire scene, only these red speech bubbles. So you're doing that speech bubble mini game again, and they are having a kind of blow up fight. And once again, that little change between the colors and the shapes of the puzzle pieces you're putting together does all the work here, and I think it does it really well. This seems like they are having not just a couple fight, they are having a kind of hateful airing of grievances fight where everything's coming out now. Personal attacks, everything. Airing of grievances is the correct way to put it. I, I agree. It, it does seem like one of those things where, like, that that's why I'm also saying when we were talking about like the one year later and the the eating the pizza stuff and like that it makes you you know we it's easy to see like now that we've seen what's happening now, uh you can see like probably all that stuff back in that one year later or whatnot are coming out immediately and it's quick fast flowing and and uh enraging I suppose it could be the word to use. Well, there's also like a pressure aspect because again, Krish's comments come out like bang 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 you know. And so it really does a good job of simulating when you're in a fight and you're like, oh, but here's my part. Well, you need to listen to my part. Well, did you think of this and how you're kind of in? Yeah, it's like combat, right? They they weren't yeah. they weren't having an, a constructive conversation. It was just to fight. This this fight was this interaction this fight interaction was slightly different also in that in the first fight at the the grocery store, uh, you have like the, the little tilt battle where you're you're trying to overpower like Krish's, um, Krish's words or whatnot. In this instance, um, there is no tilting whatsoever. It's, it's just, they're both like, you're, 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 you are still racing him, but there isn't any kind of battle. Like you're just, you're, it's essentially like symbolizing, like you're just not even listening whatsoever. You're just trying to throw in as much stuff as possible. And you don't even care what he's saying at all. It's not even like in terms of like trying to dominate the conversation. You don't even care about dominating the conversation. You care about just throwing everything out the out right now. Yep, you're not trying to win the argument or turn the other person's point of view towards your point of view. You just, you're just letting it all out. Yeah. So that was chapter 14, the fight, and chapter 15 is called Drifting. Drifting. Again, the title card is really, the title cards from this point are very uh, on the nose. So uh, <laughs> this one's called Drifting, and this is the kind of part in the story where I start to get emotional every time. So you have a picture of them holding each other, uh, kind of like a just, they have these very worried looks on their faces. They're they're holding each other, but the picture is in, I want to say, 9 or 12 or 16 pieces and you have to put the picture together, but the pieces are always drifting apart from each other. So you have to do it quickly. Uh, this, I think that the like emotion in the scene is very well like conveyed with this mechanic, but I think that this puzzle takes a little bit too long. Um, I got to that point. You never want to get to this point in a puzzle in a game where you're like, I understand, I get it but sure, please sure. just let me finish this. And I got to that point in this puzzle, but I, I do think that this is an excellent way of showing like they're holding each other, but they're, they're drifting apart from each other. Uh, I just thought about this. Um, there was something in the last uh, chapter as well, actually similar to this with the, the bed uh, where there's, they, you know, normally they've been sleeping. Like when they first, when they first move in they're they're holding each other and they're in each other's arms as they go to sleep. Uh, then when mm -hmm. uh, one year later then it's routine now they're on their own side of the bed and just sleeping uh and then after the big like a big blow-up fight um they're both now uh you're having to rearrange the picture of them in the bed and the way they actually set it up is pretty nice in which they um they make it sh imply as if like they are on their each uh, their own side of the bed and looking at each other but as you try and like put the picture together you what you spoiler alert uh, even though we're in the spoiler section what you learn is they're actually facing away from each other and so that was actually something where like i genuinely was trying to like put it together and i thought it was like that and then having to realize oh no they're looking away from each other so it was actually really well done by them in that in that last chapter 
Um, mm-hmm. I I'm with you now. Back to the the drifting off um, chapter. I'm with you. I I love the idea of like uh they're di- like the pieces are literally drifting as you slowly put the other pieces together. So then you all suddenly I'm going back up to one of the pieces that's drifted too far away, putting it closer to again, um and things like that. Maybe a little bit too long. Um, I didn't really sense that myself, but I I, I definitely it, it's 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 definitely borderline. The hack is that you overcompensate. So (laughs) you put the piece a little further in than it needs to be. So when it drifts out, it drifts into the right spot. There we go. Pro gamer tip. There you go. (laughs) From the experienced gamer, I'm here for you. Yeah, you got it. (laughs) I mean, I I found it pretty frustrating because I was just always trying to put it in the right place, but that's kind of the way to game it. But this is, uh, like I said, this chapter is kind of like the start of where the story gets very emotional for me i'm an emotional person when it comes to relationships like i cry at every wedding i go to no matter whose wedding it is and so like this is where uh the story starts to get emotional so the next chapter is chapter 16 it's called moving out and as the title card would suggest yeah the krish moves out so you're packing up the things that you moved in in chapter 10 and what it does is two things the whole thing is in um like black and white as far as i can tell or as far as i remember yep but it also just shows you once he moves out the shelves are empty the kitchen is you know half empty you know the house is empty without him Mm -hmm. and you also throw away the map that has all those fun polaroids on it yeah it does a good job of showing um the gap Right. Somebody leaves your life. There is a gap. Yep. If I if I wanted to if I if I wanted to go next level, it would have been almost kind of cool. Uh, if the like the way you would have uh framed or the way when you moved in, like the way you just oriented the stuff yourself, it would have been kind of cool actually to see if they actually were able to like transport that to the moving out part. I you know this is not a this is not a negative point on them. I, it was just something I randomly thought of being like, oh, that would have been kind of cool. Um, yeah, I remember I remember seeing some stuff on the shelf and being like, I definitely kept that shit in the box. And now it's up on the shelf. Right. I don't That's know. Nick too. And he threw away. All yeah, the I threw all of Florence's stuff out. And then I'm like, wait, what the hell? What do you mean they're out there now? Um, obviously, yeah, that you, bitch you know, she took the picture of her family out of storage. What is she thinking? Unbelievable. Ridiculous. <laughs> uh, yeah. But, you know, a year passed. So obviously, things can change and all that. But uh, also, you know, just a beautiful um animation as well when she's just sitting alone on one side of the couch and it's raining outside and just the color like the colors the colors the rain the animation like yeah it's it's just it's it's really well done just to to uh um, convey the emotion yep exactly chapter 17 is called fragments and you do the clock spinning thing again um you spin the clock time fast forwards you see kind of Florence living that post-breakup life. She goes on a vacation. Uh, Winter comes and goes, but something I noticed is that in all of the scenes, she's looking to the left where Krish was in all of the other scenes. So it's a very good kind of way to visualize the fact that uh, she's still thinking about him, even though she's she's doing all of these other activities. Yeah, uh, once again, highlighting like his absence. Um, I don't remember her actually going on vacation, and we played it she two gets, hours ago. The, no, she does. Yeah, there's like the beach. It's very quick. <laughs> it's just like one f- flash, like picture of her somewhere that's clearly not her house, not her job. You know, mm-hmm. some other location. I liked. Um, I you know one of the, like it's like almost like the B story in this game, but like her relationship with her mother. Um, you know, it's now come full circle. Uh, she starts off, it's obviously, it starts off with mom nagging her, nagging her, you know, why don't you have a boyfriend yet? Uh, well, you there's know. two phone calls with mom. Yeah. And, they and both, both are irritated. Yeah. The, and, the, and she, you know, mom, mom's annoying. She's basically, you know, you can basically roll your eyes, blah, blah, blah. And I, I, the thing I obviously noted was, you know, he, he moves out and she herself like put, go, calls mom on her own and so and she does the talking instead of just and she does the talking and, and things like that so yeah so it, it comes 
that comes full circle in terms of like the B story, her relationship with her mom. So that's uh, that's also another element that's kind of cool to see as well. Yeah, exactly. Chapter 18 is called Let Go. And this is the shortest chapter. I This is like 20 seconds. But you're walking. It's a picture of Florence and Krish walking. And then as you walk, Krish fades away like a ghost. Um, and then the scene is over. It's, uh, I guess, visualizing that Florence is slowly getting over Krish and her life is not like defined by his absence anymore now she's kind of able to go on her own again yeah i mean okay this is annoyingly deep but um you know breakups can be it it, their own their own type of grief you know the person didn't die but it's, it's still losing someone from your life and um one thing i heard recently and specifically in terms of grief with a death um is that it's not that you get over your grief, you learn how to live with it. And so that's kind of what I saw with this. Like she's walking with him, she's walking with him. And it's just, there's no animation. There's no like, I'm walking here or there's no, I'm trying to get past this. It's just like walking in a straight point and he slowly fades out, you know? And I, I that quote came to mind when I was playing that. Yeah. The other thing I'll note about it is, um, you know, you you really don't you really don't have to touch you literally don't touch anything because it, it just does it on its own. Um, but you know, one thing I noticed at least on the switch, I don't know if you could do this on the on the phone, uh, is you can actually use the 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 control stick and you can actually have her stop walking. Um, so she starts walking ahead of Krish and he slowly fades. Or but uh, at least on the switch, you can actually have her stop and Krish catches up to her. So it's almost kind of like, you know, implying, you know, it's like it kind of gives you the idea. And when you catch up to to Krish, like the game now literally is just forcing her to walk forward anyway. So it, it's obvious it's obvious there's only one thing that can happen, and that's her walking away. And it makes me wonder if that's that's one of the things that they were trying to convey as well, where it's like, like, um, even if you want to hold on to the memory or something like that, um, you know, time time passes no matter what or or something like that. I'm, I, you know, I, I'm not deep, I'm not philosophical or deep enough to to figure out like what it truly implies but I, I wanted to point that out as well there's something there's something there for a better mind than me to to be able to explain yeah in that way that you have to keep moving forward and I guess like so on the phone I think all you do is hold down on the touch screen and she'll move forward so I guess I didn't get that kind of input i don't remember my switch playthrough very well but i didn't get that input of like if you let go he catches up maybe that symbolizes how like it's not a like linear you know um today i'm thinking about krish 100 percent of the time tomorrow will be 99 percent, and so forth and so forth like you're gonna have days after a breakup where like it's suddenly that person like that memory and stuff is like fully in your head and you're going to have a really hard day because of it. Um, Maybe something like that. Well, and then this is just a great example about why this game has so many levels for being as simple as it is. Right. You said this chapter is 20 seconds long, but you can read all of this into it, you know, exactly. You can also say you don't have a choice of going back in time. You can either stand still or you can move forward, you know, exactly. Yes. yeah, this is this is a fabulous game. Well, in a way, it, like the game is also even telling you you can't stand still. It literally doesn't let you stand still. Like it, once Krisha ca- catches up, it, you start moving forward anyways. So yeah, That's like fair. yeah, lot lot. We we just t- I mean, what did we just do? We just like basically quadrupled the amount of time on this chapter by talking and uh, in, in talking about it. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, it's and like Heather said, it just shows like for such a short scene there's a ton of thought put of, into like what's that. happening here yeah so chapter 19 is called wake up and well metaphor there wake up florence pulls the watercolor set out from you know under the junk and she starts painting and you get that spin the clock thing again you spin the clock and color returns to the world and florence is happy and plants appear and you get Polaroids again of things that she's doing after um, her life with Krish, after 
uh, kind of like getting back to normal life and enjoying being single and things like that. So she goes and cooks with her mom. Like you see that relationship has gotten stronger because of this. Mm-hmm. She goes to a sketch Boy, club. She gets a cat and she names her cat Loaf. That's and she opens name. up. Yeah, it's a good cat name. <laughs> and she opens up kind of an Etsy type shop selling her artwork. And you can see things are going great. You do the accounting mini game from earlier in the game that you've done several times, but this time she's calculating her money that she's earned from her business. And I think it's a cool way to use a mechanic that used to represent something dull and boring and something that brought no joy. And now it's representing like the fruits of her, like her passion with her hobby that she's following now. Yeah. And she's doing it from home as well. So like the, the, the location as well changes in, in a, in a much more pleasant way. Um, right. Uh, the, yeah. I, and I'll, the only the thing I'll add is like, yeah, life is sort of back to normal, but also better than ever. Right. Like she's, you know, the, the relationship with the mom is essentially fully mended or so. So she's now, now she's actually like going out of her way to hang out with mom and, and cooking. Uh, she's joined a sketch club. So she's getting out into doing like social activities with people who have similar passions as her. Um, of course you get the, the adorable cat. Um, and now she's clearly started the side side business. So even though things have like, she's moved on and things have gone back to normal, things are now better than ever actually. Well, because the color yeah. is brought from her focusing on herself and bringing joy in her own life instead of finding joy from a narcissistic relationship. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Finding at least at the very least, finding joy from within instead of finding joy coming from another person and relying on that other person for it. Yes. Yes. And should note, like the colors early in the game are pretty simple. Like the scenes will maybe have like three or four different colors. Like, and then in these later scenes, they are like bursting with colors, like all the colors in the rainbow. Yeah. That's a good, that's a good shout. Yep. And her art, whenever they show her art, it, it includes, it's like Lily Pulitzer style color and patterns all on top of each other yeah so the last chapter in the game is called moving on chapter 20 moving on and florence quits her job and she packs up her office and while you're putting your office supplies into a box to carry out she finds a picture of krish and when i saw this the first time i was like oh fuck like depression spiral here we come but she looks at the picture happily and she puts it in the box, not the trash can. She takes it with her. Yeah, and... she put it in the trash. Yeah, much to have this dismay. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't I don't know. I think I don't know. I like how she takes it with her and this is just a memory of something in the past that she obviously like she is not super bitter about this anymore. Um it's i don't know good memory i i personally do not think that you have to like burn all memories of exes that's not something i believe in and so it, it's fine with me that she takes it with her she doesn't throw it away i mean i don't think you need to burn all memories but i definitely could hear my girlfriend's voices in my head being like what are you keeping that around for you know yeah, like I, yeah what it like not even just oh let you know do something violent to get it out of your life but just like what is the point here you know to like put it in a drawer and have some random memory pop up when you're looking for hot sauce you know or yeah (laughs) because she keeps it in the hot sauce drawer for sure that drawer in the kitchen that's full of all those taco bell packets you get (laughs) oh yeah from my many taco bell runs (laughs) yeah um so but yeah i just i i don't think you need to burn and destroy everything but I also, there is a point where it's like, why? Yeah, because that that picture is going to go in a drawer. She's not going to like put it up on the wall or something, right? Right. So it reminded me of like an old uh, How I Met Your Mother episode. Um, I forget. They basically call it, I think, like uh, rose colored glasses. You know, the idea is just the idea of like you remember fondly of like some of the old things that you used to do. But then when you actually like think about it, it's like, oh, actually, that sucked. Like, like high school, like the basic example is high school. Like, oh yeah. You know, when we're in our fifties, we're gonna be like, oh man, high school is so awesome. But then you look back and it's like, wait a minute, high school is actually terrible. Like that was actually like the worst <laughs> years of my life. Like, like, or stuff like that. And so like she, but she's at like a nice spot now, basically where 
you know, she's moved on well enough, essentially, and it, enough time has passed that, you know, when you look at this picture of her and Krish, you know, she's she's at that rose colored phase of sorts where she can like look back and be like, oh, yeah, you know, that was a fun time with that with that guy or whatever. And then if she were to focus on it, I'd be like, wait a minute, he sucked. Like, there's a reason I'm not with him anymore or something like that. So, well, like, you don't walk yeah. around our apartment and see framed pictures of my exes or Nick's exes, you know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, yeah, I mean, if you if you think about it past what's happening in the scene, maybe you could be like, why? But I do just the, the fact that she decides to keep it and not throw it away, because if she was going to throw it away, the developers would have had that, like, you know, drag the yep. picture over to the trash can right. or leave it on the desk, you Set know. trash on uh, fire. <laughs> Walk away. <yeah. laughs> Put it in the trash can, pee on it, set it on fire. You have options. This is a video game. No. No, it's a good way to quickly show uh, moving on and being happy and not holding on to resentment. Exactly. Yeah, that's the point here. So the scene continues and Florence has an art exhibition. Um, she's like, I mean, things are things are going great. Her very own art exhibition, kind of a dream come true thing. And the game ends with her kind of looking out the window with uh, with the cat, smiling. The weather is sunny. Everything's extremely colorful. Happy ending. That's how it. Fit. That's how the ending goes. Everything is awesome. And it also shows the mom relationship again because in the beginning of the game, you know, mom was yelling at her, "Why are you drawing? Do your classwork." And at the end of the game, mom is proud of her and is at the um, gallery showing as well. Right, exactly. Yeah, so this kind of sets up like a, I don't know, this is not the ending I was expecting. I'll say that. So I, when I was playing this, I thought that this was going to be like they break up and then they get back together at the end and you know, have some moment of like mutual understanding. And that's how the happy ending will happen. Cause I didn't expect this to be a, a sad ending either way, but I didn't expect it to be like, they break up, she moves on. And then she has uh, her, you know, her own personal life flourishes at the end. So what did you guys think of the direction it took and the way that the story ends? I think it made sense, you know, take out the trash, the house smells better. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah I don't know I think a theme that I saw a lot as listeners might have picked up on is that um, what is she doing for herself you know what when does she have attention on herself and her own well-beings her own hobbies you know giving attention to the important relationships in her life like her mom um and then she finally pursues her dreams. She finally do goes after what she wants and her life is, is for the better, you know? Um, yep. Yeah, I, I I really liked this ending. I expected to see Krish at the gallery. Um, yeah, I, me too. I was, I, was, yeah. I was debating on whether I expected them to get back together or at the very least there have been some sort of like, you know, mute, like as Heather sort of said, like a mutual closure understanding type of thing um but yeah I, I i expected him to be at the gallery uh but he wasn't there so whatever um i i i i liked the idea of having her finish like uh um just being out on her own thrive like living her best life and thriving and, and things like that it's a you know it's it's a, once again it's sort of like a nice little i guess change of pace from what one typically expects you know just like a, a nice uh um that what you normally expect from just movies or tv shows or, or things like that so that was a that was a nice little thing as well well i think that if krish was at the gallery so one of the plays game plays that you do is um you find people who are staring at the paintings and you talk with them so it right. shows like yeah. you know not only is it a gallery showing but it's like a very successful gallery showing people are interested in her art um so I guess if like Krish was there, maybe as she was leaving Successful and Rich, he was like playing for his cello for rats in the alley <laughs> that she walked by. <laughs> yeah. What I was expecting, like Nick said, I was expecting not because once it became clear 
to me that they were not going to get back together. I was expecting that, like, you know, she's walking home from the gallery. She sees him playing in the park or something. They make eye contact. They nod at each other. And then they keep going their separate ways, like some kind of closure. But you don't get that. And I think that's good because, you know, echoing how real breakups go, sometimes there is no closure. You just never talk to or see that person again. And maybe through some effort on your own part, but maybe just because you've moved on and you're not like, hey, I should, you know, you know even if you see them on the side of the road, maybe you're not going to be like, hey, hey, <laughs> yeah, I'm waving right now. Hey, I know you, you know, maybe that's not going to happen. So the fact that there is no closure just kind of echoes how closure is not really a real thing a lot of times, you know, for real relationships. Closure doesn't so. come from someone else. It comes from yourself. You exactly know, like yeah. and florence definitely gets that yeah it's like when people break up and they're like oh i'm just gonna go for this third breakup lunch with my ex for closure it's like you're playing <laughs> yourself right now there's no exactly. closure you're yeah. getting from this yeah so in the end i and like this is a criticism that some people have of the game that the way the story turns out and it some i read some reviews where people called this like a narcissistic ending but I don't agree with that. I think that this is, I think this is good. If this is the direction they're going to go in, they did it the best way. I like this ending. I like yeah, it. I like it too. Um, I actually don't love the endings where the, like what you just described where the couple ends, but then they make eye contact in passing and continue on those way, their way. Like that always, I just watched a movie that has an ending like that. We're in this. I was just going to say that's a rom-com ending. Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. Um, spoiler alert, in the spoiler section, <laughs> that's an ending for um, Roman Holiday, one of Audrey Hepburn's movies, and it makes me sad. I don't know why. It just, it makes me sad. But this one, this type of ending, you know, it, it, you feel excited. You feel happy. Yeah, I'm going to have to put a spoiler warning at the beginning of the episode. Spoilers for Florence and the Audrey Hepburn movie, Roman <laughs> Holiday. Yeah. You'll find out why later. <laughs> I mean, it's a black and white movie. If you don't know by this point, like, <laughs> yeah, we're we're past the statute of limitations for spoilers on Audrey Hepburn movies for sure. <laughs> I I just remember the classic movie as well that invokes this uh, theme, and that's the breakup with uh, Vince Vaughn and Jennifer Aniston. Like, that's a whole movie right. about just like them together, and then they break up, and at the very end, I think they they see each other on the streets. They have a pleasant conversation and then walk their separate ways and yay, like they they both moved on. Hooray. It's Life is good. Yeah. You're not going to kill your ex if you see them on the street. <laughs> yeah. And I also kind of like, like looking at this holistically, I like how this is the story of a relationship in someone's life, not like the relationship where they got married and lived forever. This is just okay. a relationship. It lasted a couple of years and uh, Florence is going to move on. She's going to get into another relationship. Krish is going to do the same thing. And uh, Heather can predict how Krish's next relationship is going to end up. <laughs> but <laughs> this is, uh, it's just one part of Florence's history. It's not telling the story of like how I met your mother, you know? Yeah. Uh, and it was like, it was two hit relationships too, right? Like, cause it was uh, Chris, like one didn't work out with Krish. And another yeah. one uh, started off, let's say, poorly or whatnot with her mom, but now it works out great. So it's like you got you got you had two relationships uh, uh, at the same time, and you had two different yeah. results. And some people would say that the most important relationship is the one with her mom, and that one is the one that turned out really well. Yes. And she she came out of the relationship from Krish a much more confident, stronger person. So everything seemed to work out pretty well for her in the end. Well, also the mom between the mom and Krish, the mom's the only one that ever uh, engaged with Florence and like asked her how she was doing, even though it was like mm -hmm. annoyed, annoyed conversations. Yeah. 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 We talked about the there's one scene where you're texting with Krish and it's the only time where you get any kind of like dialogue that you can see between the two, but it's all with emojis and it's like laughing emoji heart eyes emoji heart emoji uh you don't have any text there that's the only time you get any well anything really yeah uh, between yep. the two of them there's also a so. sad face emoji and when nick was trolling me while playing this game 
his only responses were putting in the sad face emoji. Just sad face, sad face. Oh, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah there is. Yeah. But that, that kind of subway texting conversation, because that was really early in the relationship, that kind of read to me as like that, oh, I love you. No, I love you. I love you more like that, you know, okay, lovey-dovey. No, you hang up. Yeah. You hang up first. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. <Definitely. laughs> so, yeah, that is the story of Florence. And I think uh, if you've listened this far, you know that all of us really, really enjoyed the game. Um, I said earlier i played this game three times i cried all three times i played the game i will next time i play it too it's just the way that the mechanics really hammer home the emotions in the story work you know if i just read this story as a web comic it would not have worked the same way if this story had to be a game the yeah. way that they tell it you know it's funny you said that because actually um there was a webtoon um like the app the one of the phone apps webtoons uh, where basically a bunch of like I, I guess I would call them like indie artists uh, making their own like uh, manga, for example. Uh, there was actually one that was like eerily similar in the same way in terms of like uh, it was like starting it was it was featured starting a woman and she found a relationship, they broke up, and then she actually started an art gallery or something like that. Um, I, I I swear I'm not making this up. Um, and now I think about it, like I do prefer Florence as well because of the interactive elements. Like it just it really did bring a bit more to it uh, than just simply reading and seeing like, you know, like pretty pictures and, and things like that. So, I, you know, a lot of credit yeah. to you, Florence, for, for building on that. And this is what the detractors of like this style of game and walking Sims, they all say like, does this need to be a game? Can it just be a movie? Or in this case, can it just be a web comic? And I emphatically say, no, this has to be a game to hit the way that it does. Same with some of the other walking sims we've done on the show here with Firewatch and Gone Home. Those have to be games for those stories to work the way that they're being told. And I feel the same way about Florence. So, I'm with you. Cool. Well, Nick and Heather, thank you for joining. Uh, it's been a pleasure talking about Florence with you guys and kind of catching up a little bit at the same time. It's been awesome. Thanks for coming on the show. Thanks for having us, Thank Dave. you. We miss you. Can't wait to yeah, see you Yeah, miss you guys summer. too. Yeah, we'll see you soon. And for everyone listening, thank you for listening this far. Once again, if you'd like to support the show, the best thing you can do is to spread the word. Tell your friends that, hey, you remember that game Florence that I told you to play? Because I know there's other people who really love this game. Well, Tales from the Backlog covered that. Go listen to that episode. And yeah, spread the good word. Subscribe, ratings and reviews if you can. All of the podcast stuff. And when your friend starts running away from you because you recommended a podcast, chase after them and continue to bug them. Make sure that you have the endurance to keep up with your friend as they're running away. That's my <laughs> advice to you. That's good advice. Or get a bike. Yeah. Yeah, get a bike. Yeah, that's that's a, a good thing. Or a skateboard. You can be like Chris. There you go. <laughs> The only way that you should be like Krish, maybe. Maybe. So uh, and the cello. Yeah, and and the cello. Well, you don't want to carry the cello when you're chasing after your friend. No, no, it's a no. bit unwieldy. Of course not. That could but the cello oh. is cool, yes. Don't um don't let Krish kind of color your view of cellos. Cellos <laughs> are cool. Hashtag not all cellos. <laughs> Hashtag team Dave. Thank you for listening, everybody. See you next time. Bye. Thank you.